Hey guys, um, Tristan here again from Property Toolkit. Today I just want to run through how to get your letters opened. So I know we've already discussed going direct to vendor, popping letters in the post, um, doing follow-up, being persistent with it. But how do we actually get our letters opened? Because so many people receive loads of letters uh, and I'm sure you've received something in the post that you look at it like, is that junk mail? Is that actually something that I want to open? So how do we need to look at something? How do we get these letters open? What makes you stand out from the crowd? And why you should be using letters? So the first thing I'll touch on is the why you use letters. And I think you're already sold on this if you're watching this video. But letters are a great way to kind of avoid all the different normal communication methods, all the kind of junk, the bubble of everything else that's going on around you. You've only got to look at your phone and you've got adverts coming up on there. You look on the, you watch the TV, you've got adverts on there. You listen to the radio, you've got adverts on there. You've got leaflets, whatever else. You need something just to cut through all of it and reach to people. And where letters have obviously always, like, they, they seem personal. And the more personal they are, the more likely they get opened. So you've got to think, the most of the mail outs and the stuff that you've been is stuff that looks disingenuous, that just looks spammy, that looks like marketing. So when it comes through the door, it's got a whacking great picture on the front of it. It's got, you know, right in the front, it's got a keyhole window. And, and all of that stuff just puts people off when it comes to opening them. So how can we get our letters opened? So a lot of people I've seen out there use coloured envelopes. And by using a coloured envelope like red, gold, um, you know, blue, whatever else, it's a neat idea to have something go through the post and you look at it and you think, you know what, that's not quite a nice letter. It looks like a birthday card or something. And at that point, people think, you know what, I'll open that card and then at that point you've got to open and you're in front of them. The problem I think comes to with using a coloured envelope is if you're doing HMO letters, so it probably works really well if you're doing service accommodation, you're targeting, um, targeting properties like that. If you're sending out to people looking for empty properties or you're trying to get hold of land, something like that will really stand out because it's not what people are used to receiving. But being an HMO landlord myself um, and knowing quite a few, we receive tons and tons of letters. Um, some of them quite laughable, some of them really good, and, but a lot of them all come in lovely envelopes. Uh, and the reason being is uh, a lot of people train or explain that this is a great way to get them open, which which is a good idea if you're targeting other properties. But imagine if I've received, you know, in the last month, two months, five coloured envelopes, all from tenants or people trying to tap me rent to rent deals or trying to buy properties, I think. Every time I see one, I recognise it. So what do I do and how have I managed to get results? So personally, I use just a manila, vanilla, box standard envelope, and, but I usually get a nice, slightly high quality one. I put that in the post, but then what I do is I'll handwrite it. So I handwrite it, and I usually I just put the first name on it, because if you put, say, Tristan, um, Property Toolkit, da -da -da, X -R -O Z underneath all of it, then that way when someone receives it, they're like, oh, they must know me because they've used just my first name. Because every time you ever send something that's formal, and you may have other opinions on this, everyone always says Mr. Tristan Gordon, or you'd put Mr. T, T. Gordon, whatever else, but that looks really formal. Whereas if you just write Tristan, it looks like you know the person. And the idea is you're just trying to get those envelopes opened. So once you've got that, um, the other bit I like to do is I don't like to put in, and I'll just show you in crowd these. I like to put in, little trinkets and um, I've got this little magical thing that I got all the way from uh, China and um, you can't really see what's inside I'll try and bring them a little bit closer but mine have got all little tools inside and the idea being it adds a little bit of weight to your envelope so when someone receives the envelope they can feel oh there's something nice inside there's something a little bit different and that makes them want to open it so the next thing that I, I do uh, and it is again I think it's quite a good idea is I think I've already said, but you always handwrite the envelopes because handwriting makes it look like it's unique, personal and original. Um, I've seen there's loads of different things online. You can get MailChimp, there's um, Send Letter, there's a few different platforms online where you can to bulk upload all of your letters to be sent and it'll send them out for you. 
But there's a lady that I've used before uh, called Emma. She runs a company called Kind Guards based in Hampshire. And she actually just says handwritten envelopes. She's got really nice handwriting. She uses either calligraphy pen uh, or whatever else. But you can send over your letters to her. She'll write them. Uh, and if you ask nicely, she might even sign them on the inside with your name. And that's fantastic. Because you can send those out to people. Uh, and then they receive it. And it looks like a personal handwritten letter just to them. And that's a way of automating the process. But you can just send over pre-merged PDF letters or whatever else you want over to her, get those all sent and printed for you so you're not spending endless time working on those deals trying to get those across the line. There's also a company out there, uh, I've lost their name, but they also do just direct vendor marketing and targeting a few using their own lists and they do all the working for you. I think they print the letters. The other bit I've done is stamps. Why does a stamp matter? So you want a stamp to make it look like it's personal, you value the person, and they want to open it again. So how is a stamp going to make someone open it? So you can put on a, rather than franking something, where it's going to have a pre-sealed number on it, and it'll write a two or whatever beside it. If you send those in the post, again, it looks like marketing. We're trying to avoid that. So if you use, uh, say, just a first-class stamp, a second-class stamp, that looks like it's someone who's written the envelope, they've put a stamp on it, and then you put it in the post in the box, and you cut off on your, your one, once daily walk to do your, your posting, or you've had someone else do it for you. But it makes it look like someone's put effort into it. The other bit that I found that worked really well to get the letters opened and increase our conversion rates was using commemorative stamps. And commemorative stamps, if you would have received one at some point, a commemorative stamp is the one with a picture on it. So it could sometimes be like Star Wars, it could be like celebrating gardening, it could be loads of different things. So all those types of little extras help your letter get opened. So to recap, personally I don't use coloured envelopes, I know people do and they do work quite well if you're, if you're probably not doing HMO landlords. So envelopes, choose the right colour, white or colour really. Um, then. Try put something inside it. Number two. So put a little trinket or whatever, something to fill it out. I've even put business cards in before and that works quite well. Um, three, I've said about using stamps. So you should either put a first class stamp, second class, or a commemorative stamp on. Four, I turn around and said about handwriting everything. Make it look like it's personal, and that kind of ties back into earlier. But by just writing, say, a first name, you're just making it look more personal and get people to open it. And five, if I can help you, just get in touch. Uh, I'll see what I can do to help you with your direct vendor campaigns. And there's obviously there's ways of marketing. Obviously, there's ways of improving this and making it easier for yourself. You can automate parts of the process and the research, but just make sure that when you're doing direct vendor marketing, it's laser targeted. All right, thanks for that. Next time, I'm going to touch on how we can find the right contact details for people, possibly how else we can reach out to them. But there's a few other bits in this series that we're going to be running through to help you with your direct vendor marketing. My name is Tristan from Property Toolkit. I look forward to hearing from you.